Are you ready to go trucking, Diesel? I'm ready, man. Are you born ready for this? Why not? Weasel, are you excited for a trucking day? Are we going on the truck? Going on a trip? He hasn't been able to sit still. We just got onto the highway now. Staring intently out the windshield. It's a weasel day today. We have to go up to Pinawa, which is, uh, you know, last week we went up to Pointe du Bois. Pinawa is kind of up in that area. It's not quite as far. It's the same general idea in that area there. We got to be there this morning to unload. So for the majority of the day, I know I'll be driving. So I figured today's a good day to bring the weasel along and drag him out of retirement for a bit and make him do some work. Right, Diesel? You want to drive today? Daylight hours are quickly shortening. Before you know it, it'll be daylight savings time. I don't like daylight savings time. I'm not a fan of that. But, you know, we got to change the clocks eventually in fall and probably next month. I don't know when that happens. I don't know. My phone changes on its own, so <laughs> I could look it up. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting up here in Canada how uh, I always talk about this, the change of daylight hours, because every year it amazes me. Every year. But it starts off slowly, right? After summer solstice, you don't really notice it that much. And then all of a sudden around the equinox, just boom! Changes so fast. But we're out here on the highway on the way to the truck, and so far everyone seems to be behaving. Oh, I think it's gonna be a good day. We got a clear sky, we got the sun coming up over there in the east. Our trailer's waiting for us around here somewhere. We're taking trailer 604, I think. It's a roll tight, so it should already all be tied down and ready. But I came in a little early, so I, I do have time to do it if it's not. And hopefully it is, so that I can use this extra time doing other things I need to do to get ready. <laughs> this is a nice uh, freight liner here. Get out of his way. Let him turn around first. That is nice. I've seen this truck around. It's got that big light bar on the grill in the front. That's awesome. I bet you can see for two miles with that thing. Maybe I should get a light bar for my truck. I wish they weren't so expensive, but you know, everything good and worth it is usually expensive. All right, Diesel. You ready to go do some trucking or what? Oh, here's our little guy right here. Oh, oh. oh, she's still sleeping. She's gonna be so grumpy. Oh man, she's not gonna wanna wake up. It's a little chilly this morning. Everything's wet with dew. Everything's very moist. Very moist. There she is. Diesel. Are you ready to go trucking? You wanna go in the truck? Yeah, it's right there, man. It's, it's, it's right there. Holy smokeroni, man. I'm so excited. I, I'm so, look at me. Look at me, look, look, look how excited I am. This is my excited face. All right. You ready, man? Come on. Go to the truck. <laughs> Time to go to Pinawa. Got your steps right here, man. You gotta go to the bathroom first, or maybe you already did over there. Yeah. Excited. Holy moly, man. Wait, wait, okay. Let me get this on here first, okay? Yeah. There you go, back on your throne. All right, Weasel. Oh, it's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day. You ready for this? 
It's a little cold in here, man. Turn the heat up. I have the heat on. The engine's got to warm up just a little bit. It's not that cold. I am a pampered weasel, okay? I have standards. I like it to be a perfect 70 degrees at all times. Acting like a little bit of a princess, eh? He's been spoiled. You know, our house is usually much colder than this. But he does get a blanket for night. <laughs> he a blanket. Such a good boy, Weezy. Such a good boy. Okay, it's gonna warm up right away, don't worry. It's not that cold. You'll be fine. I'm not even wearing a toque. Look at me. Can you sit? It's kinda weird when you're just standing there. There you go. Good boy. You guys excited? Okay. You ready to get our trailer, man? You gotta keep your eyes open, okay? We're looking for trailer 603. It'll be a roll tight. It'll probably be in a loaded lineup. Got your steps behind me there. Gotta use my mirrors like an old fashioned trucker. Still remember how to use those things. Pretty sure. Well, the sun's coming up. That means we gotta get at it. I think this is it right here. This blue one. I think that's the one, man. 603. I could read that from further away, man. You need that. You do have eagle eyes, don't you? Got 4K vision, man. Even if it is black and white. I'll be right back. So this trailer was dropped really low. I had to push it up. Oh, and it was dropped on the asphalt, too. Loaded. Clearly on the asphalt. The cement is right there. Naoba. Who did that? Naoba. I'm gonna wreck our asphalt. Yeah, let's go check my sure there is compressed premium air in all our tires. Fall air. Fantastic. This axle is lifted and there's no ratchets right here to mess with it, so that's good. You only want to make sure. I guess I should have turned the lights on before I came back here so that I could tell you if the lights worked or not. Oh, that's a bright sun. Okay. Okay, look how much room is back here yet. Wonder why they dropped it so far forward. I know that the cement here has been pushed down a little bit, so sometimes uh, it's a little too low right in that dip where the cement is. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's not even close. <laughs> Oh well, stuff happens. It wasn't me. No harm done. Doesn't look like it damaged the asphalt here, so no harm done. Lucky it wasn't a hot day. All right, we got the lights on now. We need a proper inspection. Brake lights. Marker lights. License plate light. I want to show you what I was talking about with this lift axle. You see how this, uh, whoever tied this load down, they have one strap strapped in here, it's tight. And look how it's touching this lift axle. So every time this lift axle touches the ground, it's been chewing out of this tire right here. You see all that damage? So I'm going to put this axle down because I can't move this. This is uh, holding freight down inside there. Okay, so we're going to put that axle down. around to this side. And now it's free. I'm touching this. So yeah, it's wearing down a little bit by being on the ground, but it's wearing down less by not getting chewed up by this thing. So that's one thing you gotta be careful of when you uh, have these lift axle trailers. That's what I was talking about right there. 
So thankfully the tire is still good to go. It's just had little chunks of rubber eaten out of it. It's, it's still good to use. However, if it were to stay like that for a long period of time, every bridge connection you go over or every uh, driveway you go down and that rear axle touches the ground, it's gonna turn, it's gonna eat more out of it if we're not careful, right? So just keep that in mind if you do have a lift axle. If it is up, make sure those ratchets are nowhere near it. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Diesel, I think I'm allergic to you. And I'm okay with that. I am perfectly fine with that. You're such a good boy. Oh, it's warmed up in here like crazy. Kicks. i to turn the heat down now. And off we go. The trucking duo. Hey, Diesel. You just relax and enjoy the ride, man. I got it. I won't make you drive today, okay? I get it, you're retired. Oh, that is a bright ball of fire. We're gonna drive right towards it, okay, guys? Put your shades on. Whoo! Wonder if this will help? Doesn't help me at all, okay. Wow, that's bright, even with the shades on. Man. Oh, that guy's lucky, he's got a bigger visor than me. One thing about these Peterbilts is these itty bitty visors, they, uh, they don't help much. <laughs> but we'll make it happen, we'll make it happen here. Man, that's bright. Seems brighter than usual today. Woo! So, Pinawa is, like I was saying, northeast of Winnipeg. I've let the customer know that I'm on the way. Me and Diesel are gonna make this delivery on time. We're gonna have a positive experience. And we're gonna make it a positive experience. Not that I was expecting it not to be, but I like to have all interactions with shippers and receivers to be as positive as possible. And I know you've heard me say it before, but when you drive directly at the sun, it really shows you how dirty the inside of your windshield is. Oh, hey, and I brought along some uh, bull snot grease today and bull snot glass cleaner. I can get this glass cleaned, hopefully, even once we stop. And I'm gonna try that greasable on uh, our roll tight trailer. See how well it does. It's supposed to resist all, uh, you know, when the water washes up, because the lubricant we're using now, as soon as you drive through a rainstorm, it washes all the lubricant out and then it's all seized up and hard to open again, right? The bull snot grease is supposed to resist uh, that water when it comes in there and stay lubricated even when it gets wet. So, gonna give it a shot and tell you how it goes. making our way out to cottage country. This road gets really busy on the weekends. We're headed straight east. Winnipeg is behind us, quite a ways already. We're getting it more so into the bush here. We're not actually going to the town of Pinawa, but we're going nearby. I've never been to this place that I'm delivering to. It seems pretty straightforward. A coworker of mine was explaining it to me this morning. I actually never even knew it was there. It's like some kind of, I think it's some kind of government facility. One of those places. Can't film while I'm there, you know. But it's neat to learn a little bit more about my province that I live in. For the last nine years, I guess, uh, well, for nine years before this last year, you know, I was over the road exploring the continent. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'd like to do that with my family one day, with Brit and our kids one day and our dogs. I'd love to go see places again sometime. But for now, as we're trying to start the family, 
and I need to stay a little closer to home, it's giving me a chance to really see what Manitoba has to offer. And it's such a small part of the province that we've explored. It's a big place. There's a lot to see up north, and northern Manitoba is very secluded. It's very, uh, very remote. There's only one road that goes halfway up the province, and from there all the way to our northernmost town, Churchill, where you find polar bears. There's no roads at all during the summer. There's one railway leading up there, but last couple of years or a couple of years ago, that railway washed out in some kind of flash flood or something. <laughs> so we didn't even have a railway to go up there. Everything had to be brought up by plane or had to be brought in uh, by boat from Northern Quebec across the Hudson's Bay because Churchill's right on the Hudson's Bay. So it's a pretty remote place up there and you don't really go up there unless you have a reason to go up there. It's so far away, just Thompson, halfway up the province. That's like an eight hour drive from Winnipeg. And if you want to drive all the way up to Churchill on the winter roads, I mean, I don't even know if you can do it in a day. You'd probably take two days to get up there to the northern part of the province. And then what are you going to do once you're up there? If you don't have any reason to be up there, <laughs> you could go on a polar bear tour, I guess. Explore the town. But yeah, unless if it's for tourism, there's not really... There's not a lot of through traffic, we'll say that, because north of Churchill, there's Nunavut. It's our uh, territory that's north of uh, our province, the Canadian territory up north. That's an Inuit territory, and that's even more remote, if you can imagine that, than our northern part of our province. No roads leading up there, and I think there's only 13,000 people living in there are 50,000 people living in the whole territory and if Nunavut was its own country I believe it would be what they say like one of the largest countries by land area it's just there's not very much going on up there it is a place I'd love to visit that's the one place of Canada that I haven't been to I've been to every other province and territory except Nunavut and you have to have a really good reason to go there or money to go there you gotta fly in or I guess you could take a boat and go up through the Arctic Ocean but not much up there except uh, you know our Navy <laughs> it's an interesting place interesting place most people like myself if we want to go on holidays we will point our nose south and go to our neighbors uh, in the United States there's just uh, a lot more going on there. More people, you know? If we had the population of the US up here, uh, we would probably be very similar. But we have less than the population of California spread across the entire place, <laughs> the entire country. So people come here to get away from civilization. They tour Canada to see wilderness because there's not many places on earth anymore that are as wild and open as Canada and we're trying to keep it that way the only other place might be Australia but that's a different kind of wild and open that's an island of death everything there wants to kill you so it's really too bad I wasn't uh, allowed to film in there it's a big government facility I didn't even know it existed. Now I know. It's like way out hidden in the bush, this big government complex. Big security, no cameras, no nothing. Me and Diesel got the go ahead to go in. Just to deliver our stuff and get out under supervision. That was pretty cool, not gonna lie. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool, kinda made my day. It felt very important. Thank God I had Diesel with me, VIP. Otherwise I wouldn't have gotten in. Right, Diesel? You got the highest security clearance there is. If you wanted to, you could walk right into the Queen's Chambers. Say hello. Not me. I'm not that important. No way, I wouldn't get within like 100 feet of the Queen. I wouldn't even get into the palace. That's one thing 
I'd like to do, I'd love to go visit the palace in the UK, in London. See Buckingham Palace. See what all the hype is about. You know. Maybe catch a glimpse of our head of state. Because I, I bet you 99% of Canadians have never seen the Queen in person. She's still our Queen. But we just have to trust that she exists because we see her on TV. I've never even been to London. I can't even personally confirm that London exists. I've never been there. I cannot firsthand confirm it. I just trust that uh, the images I see on the internet are true. places you and it makes it seem like they're following you I tried to get him to pass before slowed right down he wouldn't pass okay let's see he follows me into the yard here gotta wait for this jeep So weird. All the way back. Now I'll go and bring my paperwork in and see what they got for me next. Diesel, you guard the truck, okay? You guard the truck. Don't let anybody touch it, okay? You're in charge, man. I got this. No one shall come near. So there's a new truck in the yard right here. It's brand new. It's got unit numbers on it and everything already. I don't know who's going to be assigned to it, but I want it. If the right people are watching this video, I volunteer. It's a beautiful truck. I think it's being used for a special project that uh, we're working with right now. Or a special contract, I guess I should call it. You know, it's new, it's shiny. I could use my bull snot on it every day to keep it nice and nice and shiny. But it's uh, it has another purpose, I'm pretty sure. But if I'm wrong and it's just waiting for a driver, there's one right here. I volunteer. <laughs> I have no idea what. Uh, I, well, I shouldn't say I have no idea. I, I have a clue that it's being used for a special contract. That's what I heard, but I don't know. I'm not... I'm not uh, in those conversations. I only know the rumors. Scuttlebutt. Wouldn't that be cool, though, driving a truck like that? I would take good care of it. Oops, I don't think I went too far. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. I can do it. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. There we go. I'm trying to back this trailer into a spot. So I'm, I'm dropping this roll tight, uh, putting it down here in the empty lineup in the back, and then uh, I'm going to grab onto a van trailer. And there's an ATV in there i got to bring into Winnipeg. Plenty of room, plenty of room. There we go, 
it's kind of nice. Usually the trailers are packed in here quite tight, but this time I had a little extra room to work with. So what I do know about that uh, Peterbilt there is that it's uh, 2022, brand new. Uh, last time I saw it, it didn't even have the decals on it or the or the unit number, and today it did. So I wonder what the plans are. I hope the plans include Trucker Josh. <laughs> what? Wouldn't that be nice, eh? But not gonna happen <laughs> I like this old truck I don't know a lot of people will say oh what an old truck but the old trucks are the better trucks they're better built they're easier to fix they're easier to maintain they just keep going this thing's got almost two million kilometers on it she's still good to go there's no need for new trucks really if you can just keep fixing the old ones but anyway I uh, hooked onto our box here here's my box someone put it nice and close to that box you're gonna have to tune in tomorrow to see if I can actually roll up the landing gear. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make this a two-part day. We got quite a bit of filming in today, so we'll continue this tomorrow. To be continued. That's how I how I rope you into coming back tomorrow, you see? It's my genius that I came up with all on my own. <laughs> Anyways guys, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me for this little bit. This little trip out to Pinawa and with the weasel. He'll be here tomorrow. I'll talk to you then.